Here we're looking at the old Palestinian home. This is the only kind of museum we have here in Taibet. These are all artifacts of how people used to crush the olives. Taibet has more than 30,000 olive trees and um, uh, uh, harvesting the olives is uh, a big thing that people after 2000, because of the high unemployment, people started to return to their farmlands. But anyway, these are just old artifacts. We have a brand new olive presser. It's a donation to Taibet by the Catholic Bishops' Conference uh, in, in Italy. So again, all 16 surrounding villages come to Taibet to press their, uh, to press their olives. Um, and that's why, too, it's a huge, big destruction that the, the army, the Israeli army, and the settlers have uprooted more than one million olive trees since 1967 and half a million of them in the last few years. It's a huge big destruction to Mother Nature and it's a huge big destruction to Palestinian livelihood because people uh, sell their oil and survive. Um, here we're looking at the Palestinian uh, traditional home. Uh, the Palestinian traditional home uh, here shows all of the world religions, the symbols of the world religions before the birth of Christ, before we began to know Christ, our true God. When we enter the home, we pretty much see an inn, like the inn that the Virgin Mary would have given birth to Christ. Uh, we have a room on the top where it's used as a living room because the family sits here. It's used as a bedroom because the family puts out their mattresses at night and all sleep in one room. It's used as a kitchen because the fireplace is there. And here we have where the little animals uh, live with the family and the big animals in that area. And another important part of the Palestinian traditional home is the food storage room. It's behind this wall. Wealthy families would harvest and have enough room for the whole year. In this traditional Palestinian home, we also call this the parable home because it helps us understand some of the parables. For example, uh, you, you are familiar with the parable that they drop the man from the ceiling to be healed. Now, in a European home, an American home, you, you would not have a hole in the ceiling. But here in this Palestinian house, on top of the food storage room, it's very normal and traditional to have a hole in the ceiling because during good weather, it would dry up the grains and all these holes that we see here they're containers so wealthy people would have enough rice enough sugar enough wheat for the whole year so the woman would go and and unscrew the little rock on the bottom and as the basket is there you know collect the rice and block up uh, the container again and then she would go to her fireplace and to cook so uh, when the parable says they dropped the man from the ceiling they didn't have to make a hole the hole was already there so in a traditional Palestinian home in the food storage room there's always a hole in the ceiling so if Jesus for example was here talking with people and it was very crowded and they couldn't come in this way then they climbed up on top of the house and they didn't have to make the hole the hole was already there and also I'm sure you heard of the parable that says the man's gonna knock down the wall wall and he wants more space for his food he doesn't want to share his food with the poor he wants to make more space for this is the kind of wall that he's talking about he wants to make that room where the food is to be bigger to hold all the food the the harvest he had a good harvest and you know God says you fool your soul will be taken tonight so this wall helps us understand that parable and again uh, about Christ being born uh, in a stable with the animals it's very much where women in that time uh, in history gave birth to children because uh, for example they could not give birth here the whole family is waiting here uh, to get the news they will not give birth in the food storage room because it has to be clean and sterile for food they will not give birth here with the little animals because it's too close to the door and it's too cold. So most women like the Virgin Mary would give birth in that section of the house with the large animals, with the cows, with the horses, uh, with the lambs. And it's like central heating, pretty much. Uh, and so this is the kind of an inn that the Virgin Mary gave birth in. And another parable, uh, and I'm very terrible at explaining my parables, but in one parable the man comes and knocks and he needs bread 
and, and the person says, but I can't help you because I'm going to disturb my whole family, because he means if everyone is sleeping with him on mattresses, he's got to step over every mattress to get to the door. But because it's a good neighbor, he actually does open the door, and he actually does help the, uh, he does actually help the neighbor. And here in this section of the house, um, for example, if it was a wedding day and the bride was from this home, usually this is used as storage, but you'd put a chair there, the bride would sit there, the whole town will come and congratulate the family and, you know, uh, view the bride. And then the groom will come and pick her up, walking from his home, and then she will go with him to be married to the church. They, the whole village would walk with them to the church. So in this home, uh, it's... Um, possibly more than 450 years old. There was a family living here all the way till the early 70s. When they wanted to move out, our local Latin priest actually purchased the home for, from them. And it's the only kind of museum that we have because it shows the artifacts that they use to harvest their lands and how they would make their cheese and how they would uh, um, make their bread. And also the song uh, about don't hide your light under a bushel comes from this fireplace here because there was no other lighting here in the home. They had to put uh, any candle, any light on top of the fireplace so that the whole area uh, can be lit. And these holes that we see here on this side of the wall, because Taibe is so ancient and it's built on top of cities, these holes are, are tunnels that lead to the old historic area of Taibe and so they were used during invasions where if the army came uh, and looked who's in the home and they wanted to pick up all the young men because usually men between 16 and 45 get picked up and interrogated by the army they would come here and they would just find moms and children under 12 years old because all of the young men would hide in these tunnels and end up in the old historic center of, uh, of Taibe and we've been very blessed the Spanish government gave a grant of $300,000 to Taibet, 69 old homes like this were renovated, uh, preserving the beauty of the Palestinian architecture. Now it's a nice uh, walk through the old city so we could try again to create jobs because everything, we just have to bring projects into the village.